Bielsko Biała, in German Bielitz Biała, is nowadays a city in southern Poland with a population of around 170,000 people, the vast majority of which are Poles. But it wasn't always like this. Before World War II, Bielsko and Biała were two separate towns full of different cultures. Bielsko was called Little Vienna because of its architecture and Little Berlin because of such large number of German inhabitants. Even though the towns were in the borders of the Second Polish Republic, the main nationalities that lived there were in 1931 Germans 46%, Poles 43% and Jews 10%. The last group felt particularly close to Poland. This was evident by the declarations of the use of only Polish language by many Jews, and later on, the readiness to bear blood and sacrifice own property in defense of the Republic of Poland. As for the Germans, the case was completely different. The situation became particularly tense in 1939, when fascist militias began to work actively. Beatings and arrests became daily routine. Relations were also tense inside the government. The deputy mayor of Bielsko and the senator of the Republic of Poland, Rudolf Wiesna, called by many the ambassador of Nazism, stated that Bielsko was German, it is German and it will stay German. Due to similar actions, the propaganda war intensified in the town. However, it is impossible to forget about many Poles living in Bielsko and Biała who willingly supported the city and homeland. For example, by contributing to the defense fund and working on the construction of local fortifications. By the way, Bielsko's line of fortifications would be an interesting topic for another video I plan to make. So if you're interested, remember to click the subscribe button and rate the video. Going back to the topic. The mobilization of the Polish army began during the summer holidays of 1939. In August, German reconnaissance planes flew over Bielsko many times ignoring the poorly built and barely armed airport in Aleksandrowice. As a result, four PZL P-11 PZL P-11 fighters could fly here and stage an ambush against enemy bombers. At the end of August, the Bielsko fascist militias, numbering around 300 people, were to prepare a provocation justifying the attack of Germany on Poland and sabotage the Polish army. The provocation was foiled. The chairmen were arrested, including the deputy mayor of the town, Rudolf Wiesna, who, however, had to be released later on. The war was slowly approaching Bielsko. On the morning of September 1st, German bombers appeared in the sky. The airport in Aleksandrowice was not their main target, but nevertheless it was decided to bomb it just in case. However, the bombs fell on the nearby meadows in Mikushavice. This mistake was exploited by the Polish pilots of the hidden planes. They took off with their PZL P-11 fighters and although technically they couldn't compete with the German ones, the Poles in total knocked down three German bombers and one reconnaissance plane, losing one machine during landing. Thanks to German propaganda, this later became a symbol of victory over Polish pilots. The situation in Bielsko was closely related to that in Pszczyna, where fierce fighting took place. The final preparations for the defense of the town have just been completed. The cross on Trzelipki Hill was moved to the charge of St. Stanisław in Stare Bielsko in order to hinder the operation of the German artillery and bombers. The attack, however, was not coming. The next day, on September 2nd, the Germans broke through the front at Pszczyna. Poles staged an ambush by weakening the front of their defenses and strengthening the flanks though a quick change of attack plans by the German 5th Panzer Division made the defense plan pointless. The Poles in Bielsko, fearing encirclement, had to quickly withdraw from the town. During the night, Polish sappers blew up a railway tunnel in the center of Bielsko. The whole Trzeciego Maja street collapsed. However, no building, including Hotel President, suffered from this event. Later, during the occupation, the tunnel was renovated and the street was renamed to Adolf Hitlerstrasse. That same night, militants started shooting at fleeing soldiers and civilians. Shots were fired, among others, on the market square, close to the Sukavsky castle, 
and even in Lipnik district, far from the city center as many memoirs recount. We walked the streets of Bielsko, which we walked many times over. This time, however, they looked completely different. There was not a living soul on the sidewalks and squares, but every now and then single shots were fired from various nooks and crannies. They were not accurate, but they caused great psychological havoc. This town and the people I liked, I wanted to leave them as soon as possible. I was never so afraid afterwards, even during huge battles. Nigdy później, nawet podczas wielkich bitew, tak się nie bałem. Platoon commander Stanisław Kachel. When the sirens sounded the bombing alarm, a soldier was riding a horse down Krakowska Street. When he heard the sirens, he tied his horse to the fence and started walking towards the tenement house. However, he barely moved when he fell to the ground. It was our neighbor, a German militant, who left the house and shot him in the back, recalled Mr. Bronisław. Such events were not intended to fight the Polish army, but rather to spread unrest in its ranks. On the morning of September 3rd, the Wehrmacht entered Bielsko. A large part of the Polish inhabitants fled the town the previous night. However, a lot of Germans remained, and they joyfully welcomed the arriving soldiers. In one moment, as if ordered, except for one Jewish tenement house on the corner, all the others, which were located at Szwilki i Wiguri Square, were covered with German banners. Decorating lasted maybe five minutes. My friends in German costumes ran out to the street with pancakes, sandwiches and something to drink and greeted the Wehrmacht soldiers enthusiastically, recalled Mrs. Anna, who was back then 19 years old. After the proud entry of German troops, chaos reigned in Bielsko. The last Polish troops, although without any chance of success, defended themselves in the town. Leaflets were thrown from the plains, urging them to give up their weapons. Arrests, executions, displacements and forced labor deportations began soon after. Jewish houses and factories were plundered. The Jewish people's house and free synagogues were blown up. And this is how September 1939 ended for Bielsko. During World War II, several hundred partisan actions took place in the town and its vicinity. At the beginning of February 1945, the Germans put up a strong defense and the Red Army had to spend 12 days to capture the entire town. During the fighting, a large part of the city was destroyed. But that's the topic for another video. And for now, thank you for watching.